what have been some big things that you've noted down that they really excel at, the, the coaches that have been full-time at the elite level um, in terms of yeah, coaching development and, and also you know preparing sessions and, and programs? Yeah, the, the, I think the good ones. Um, I always thought, I always remember my episode, particularly with Craig McRae, and this was actually when he was at Richmond, mind you. So it was twenty twenty when I interviewed him, and um, and I got off the chat and I thought this guy is a bit special. This guy, um, and, and like I said, he's assistant coach. He wasn't assistant, but he wasn't an AFL head coach, and and we sort of now know the story of how well he's done at Collingwood and he's first 12 months which sort of doesn't come to surprise to me but i think the ability yeah the very professional the way they go about it um and just the organization um i think the ability to build relationships and i think you hear that a lot um nowadays with the um, younger generation coming through and the ability to sort of explain why um you're doing certain drills what what made you recognize that um you know it was working with elite junior athletes helping them make it to the AFL was going to be your passion and, and for someone listening what would be some advice in terms of finding your age group whether it be juniors seniors men's women's how would you go about uh, discovering that or is it just a matter of just trying different different levels I think probably yeah a bit of trying different le- levels and just depending on how much bigger bigger football background you've got um whether you played only a couple of years or played your whole life and you've just retired at 35 years old um so I think that would probably have something to do with it. So I don't think you need to rush the process. And that's a great thing about coaching. Like you can start in your, as early as you like and you can coach 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s. There's no real end game to it. Um, and mm. I think Dale Tapping had a great piece of advice when I had him on the podcast and um, you know, Brisbane resident coach. Um, he talked about don't rush your journey. Um, don't rush your coaching journey. You don't need to you know sprint and try and get to the afl in three years or something something like that for the developing footballs listening in like what are some tips and tricks that you've picked up along the way that um yeah has sort of something you've noticed that's done at a high standard at you know nab league level compared to maybe grassroots oh uh, there's definitely this structure acts to it um in terms of stoppages and and how uh teams are getting set up um, how the ground's getting set up that's probably a you know, a significantly higher level, I think, once you get into NAB League. If you're not set up well, you get opened up pretty quickly. Um, you know, if, you, if your wing is sitting off the stoppage of the wrong spot or or you're getting sucked into the ball too close or, um, yeah, um, you know, your forward structure's not um, starting in the right positions and moving the right patterns, it, it, it sort of does show pretty quickly at that level. But you get really good players. Like, we had Jai Clark, who went pick eight last year. He played, he was our captain last year. And, you know, these guys are that good that he's going to play, I'd assume, AFL this year. So you've got some high-quality players in your team. And for the parents listening in of a 10, 11-year-old and their son or daughter, yeah, hasn't been able to master the drop punt yet, what would be some hot tips to, to yeah, be able to teach them? Yeah, so we teach technique. We probably start with the grip. Um, so just trying to get the kids holding the ball correctly. I don't really... Um, have a footy behind me but it's just like you know getting your grip getting your fingers spread out wide hiding holding the side of the ball um you know getting just really simple things you know getting your hips shoulders facing where you want to go um getting that nice long arms not dropping the ball from a high high spot trying to get dropped below your hip um and this is a repetition it's not gonna happen overnight uh for parents listening for their kids but it's just repetition and then try to hit that you know that laces of your of your boot nice strong foot um and um and then just practicing it and then like i said we, we bring out the tennis balls which is a really good one too uh, for parents listening get a tennis ball or just try and get your kid to kick a tennis ball talking to yourself pr- prior when you weren't coaching what would be some challenges that you would um try and educate future coaches to to be aware of before they start coaching in terms of you mentioned you know constraints around you know, it's quite a busy schedule and there's some travel involved and everything what, what would be some good coping strategies to help um, be able to stay on top and, and for coaching to be sustainable, I guess, over a long period of time? Yeah, I think um, in terms of time, time consuming, like try to make everything as fish, efficient as possible. So, um, you know, whether it's work and tying that in with your training session so you don't have to you go straight to your session or, um, you know, uh, it, it, over weekends and try and um, use your time where, yeah, you can get organised for the game. When you have you know the schedule to go there so um so i think just trying to max it be really efficient with your time and where you do things um, and try and find a routine probably helps with that what works for you and um, and your family um 
But um, it's, yeah, that's probably probably one of the main things. Uh, other challenges, yeah. If, you, if and if travel's a big thing, then you maybe need to look at what what league you're in. Um, different leagues definitely travel, you know, different amounts. There's no doubt about that.